So what do you think it is? Like, what have you been able to kind of like attempt to put your finger on of like what, what slipped between the cracks here? Like, what was the disconnect? Was it something from Vince's perspective or from Hunter's perspective? I understand that they generally can have pretty different perspectives on different mm -hmm. talent. And you see that happen from NXT up to the main mm -hmm. roster often. Yep. Um, but have you like, what do you think it is that happened? So um, I think we have to, have to have to kind of go back to the start of my NXT career. Um, I remember the match that I had with uh, with Velveteen and that was a match that put me on the card uh, on, on, on the map. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember Hunter telling me a while ago, about like a year and a half ago, we had a talk. It's like, even a year and a half ago, I was kind of going like, you know, what, what are we doing? Because it's, it's, it's starting and stopping. Every time I thought we were going somewhere, we didn't. Every time I saw the fans get behind me or, you know, the ratings were positive, no one pulled the trigger on it. So, yeah. uh, so I'm drinking kombucha and everything is. <laughs> it's all right. I have pregnancy heartburn. There so I'm in, the, I'm kind of in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Hunter, Hunter told me that even back then, Vince was like, I want that guy. And then it was, uh, I think, the match with Johnny when I came back. And again, I want that guy. And Hunter kept saying, no, I have to, like, you know, I have this program with him. I want him to finish, you know, write, write, write that out. And then um, eventually, I think it was somewhere in February that I got a call from, uh, from Matt Bloom saying, you know, you, you move up. And uh, it was me, Johnny Tommaso, and uh, Trevor Ricochet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, best times on the on the uh, in my, that those those three four months leading up to WrestleMania were my favorite time that I've had in the, in, in the WWE. Me and Trevor were such a well oiled machine. You know, yeah. we were doing we were doing um, we were doing uh, Raw on Monday, SmackDown on Tuesday because we were still on Tuesday back then, and then NXT on Wednesday. We got Thursday off, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday back on live events. And I just felt like I was so in the zone. I loved it. Like that's the part about this whole business. I I, I love. The live events, I love the travel. I love it. I'm, I'm one of the few people that don't complain about that part. Sure, the travel can be tough and like flights canceling. That's I'll, I'll complain about that, but never the concept of what it is that we're doing because that's what I embrace. That's what I love. That's what I'm used to. And I remember sitting down with uh, with Vince for the very first time because Heyman was like, "Look, you gotta you gotta go in and talk with him." And I always wanted to talk to him because I find it very important in any job I've ever had to have a good relationship with uh, with the people in charge. I, I want them to know who I am, and I want them to know that I care and that I'm involved, which I did. And it was a very positive conversation. And uh, Vince was full of praise, and um, you know words were being said in terms of like, you know, where he sees me, where he sees me going, uh, you know, what part of the, what part of the card he, he sees me. And it was, you know, upper, upper positions, um, you know, and everything was super positive. And he, and, and, and he repeated that over a several course of um, my interactions with Vince, a lot of promises, a lot of like, this is what I want to do with you. That's what I'm, gonna. but the, you know, the, the translation was never there. So obviously at one point you start doubting yourself. Mm -hmm. And to the point where I think it was uh, after Money in the Bank, the Mysterio storyline, where I kept running out and getting beat up. And at one point I was kind of like, okay, what are we doing? And I, I knocked on the door. This is about the fourth, fifth conversation. I, I tried to get in there with him very regularly I look, or like, you know, talk to him at least. Yeah, it's difficult though. Yes, very difficult. I sometimes have to wait four or five hours before I can get in. And it's, it is what it is. Um, yeah. Again, that's just the nature of the beast there. And you either want to do that because you care that much or you don't. And it's both is fine. I just chose to, you know, do it. Cause I like my whole thing is I want to die on my own sword. I, I, I am not gonna, yeah, I'm going to do anything, everything I can. So at the end of it, and maybe that's also why I have peace with it. I know on my end, I tried everything. I literally yeah. tried every single thing, sat down with them. He told me, I think you're so intriguing. I think your look is great. I think your style is great, but there's something about you that right now I'm trying to figure out. And I think that is very telling the whole, I'm trying to figure it out, but I don't know what I'm just I'm trying to figure out. And that's okay. You know, that's fine. We got time. Let's figure it out. So he sent me home. 
I came back with Kevin Owens and we did the storyline and everything that I created that little vignette on my Instagram and all that stuff. I made that myself because I wanted to show that, look, I'm invested in this. I've always tried to kind of have a correlation between my uh, social media and my character because I find that important. I find that yeah. like, it's also something that Undertaker told me at one point. He said, like, you know, the business has changed nowadays. You cannot be a hundred percent character anymore because people are not going to buy that. You're going to have to lower the threshold here and there and like kind of let them in every once in a while because it's just different. It's not back in the day. It's not as protected anymore. And people, you know, need to care for the person behind the character to an extent as well. So, you know, I was trying to keep a 95, 90%, 10% ratio. You know, every once in a while, you'll see a, po- a picture of like my wife, you know, especially when I was that character. Um, and you know, it went well for two weeks and then somehow in the pipeline, something changed and Alistair Black, who was, um, never seen in, uh, either a suit or his wrestling gear was standing at raw underground in his shorts, in his, in his, in his champions short. Cause no one told me I found out as I was like, as the show was about to start, this is what we're doing. And I remember going, what? This is not what we set out to do. And I, you know, spoke to Vince. No, he was adamant on it. This is what we're doing. I'm like, okay, cool. And it just, everything went downhill. And fans saw it. I saw it. Creative saw it. Writer saw it. I went to the point where I sat down with our, v- with our, with our VB and I said, look, something's got to change. This is not going. This is not going good. I have been here for a year and a half and I feel like I've just been ping ponged continuously. Mm-hmm. And again, I, I, like I'm not someone who quickly gives up. And even then I didn't give up, you know, I'm not going to give up again. I'm dying on my own sword. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go. I want to go out the way I want to go out. I want to make sure that when I leave, I've tried every single thing. And I can't blame myself. Right. So again, I had a conversation with Bruce Pritchard and Vince, um, that lasted about 30, 45 minutes. And it was a long talk, but it was a good talk, a very good talk. Again, full of praise, complimented him on my uh, ability to always be honest with them whilst being respectful. He complimented me on my manners and just saying how much he appreciated my, my creative thought process. And he also understood that there were things during my time in the main roster that did not go the way he wanted to go. And he said, I'm sorry for that. I apologize but let's do it this way. Um, I'm going to send you home for a bit, six weeks, eight weeks. We're going to get some separation between you and Kevin Owens. And then when you come back, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're we're off off to the races. Um, I was supposed to come back rumble time. I think either on rumble or right before rumble, not sure. And obviously that never came to fruition. So I sat home for seven months and I think that necked me. I think mm-hmm. that's the part. And I kept asking, what are we doing? What are we? I don't think I've ever been more frustrated, you know, seven months sitting home than I've been in my life for my entire career. That was the most frustrating. You feel like part you're being it. held hostage. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, um, it's, um, there's, there's two sides to that coin. One is, and that, I did that. Hired an acting coach, a different one. Um, ducked down into my family history because I wanted this character, this, this dark father character to really like, I wanted it to be in the same wee house as what you had, but I wanted it to be a complete thing. So I wanted to present it with something that was real authentic that, that, you know, came from my childhood and maybe more so my father's childhood. Right. So, and not that I'm going to dive into that part. That's, that's a conversation for a different time because I think we can fill in <laughs> an entire podcast with that story. But, um, so I wanted it to, I wanted it to be real and um hired, hired a, a different nutritionist and i because i i was looking back and i said to myself man you've been depressed for these last i let myself go like physically a lot right and i didn't want i was i was just so unhappy um mentally but i was in denial about it and i didn't want to be in denial about it so i was like okay if they're gonna send me home longer then at least you know like again same mindset die in your own sword don't die on theirs, die on your own sword. So mm-hmm. step it up more and, you know, put in the work, put in everything, present it, wrote the vignettes, pitch the vignettes. Uh, uh, they tweaked it, you know, tweaked some things. Uh, initially, we wanted to do it with real actors, but COVID, you know, money, all that stuff. And so one of the writers 
uh, and I said like, hey, wh wh what if we do it as like a children's book, as like the Babadook basically? And then uh, at the time, um, Candyman, Jordan Peele's Candyman's trailer was there and they used the little, like the little uh, paper puppets and he sent it to me. He said, what do you think of this? I'm like, if we can pull it off, that'd be so cool. And we were, because the vignettes were goddamn brilliant, right? I yeah. thought they were brilliant. And um, one of the things that I thought was really cool with the vignettes is that Deadline.com uh, did like a, a small a small little note on them because apparently they boosted the ratings. And I was oh, really wow. happy. And I, like, and I send that to everyone. It's like, look, you know, like what we're doing, it's working, right? Yeah. Um, I wanted to be very involved in the entire process of the Dark Father. I wanted to do this completely different. Um, I, I, I told Merch, give me ideas, show me what you guys have, let's talk, show me the numbers, show me the numbers. Because I knew I used to do good on Merch, um, especially in NXT, I used to do great on Merch. Yeah. Um, but I want to be involved more. If we're going to do this, then let's do this. Again, everybody was on board, everybody loved it. Um, two weeks before I uh, came back and uh, st struck Biggie in the head, I had to sit down with Vince. Kind of, you know, I hadn't seen him in a while, so I just wanted to say hi to him and just kind of talk to him. It was a good, pleasant conversation. Um, he was um, he was his normal self. Uh, same things were said. He was he he, he liked it. He was uh, you know he was he, he was ready to do it. He said like, "Are you ready to do it?" And like you know, I'm like, "Yep." And and like you know, he's like, "You look good." Uh, you know, we're gonna get to it, right? So um, and that's what we did. And then like one week later, uh, actually three days ago, um, I'm sitting in the gym and I'm stretching out. And I see uh, a certain name on my phone calling me. And I'm like, why is, why is this person calling me? So I pick up and uh, it was a very distinct voice. And um, this person also did not understand, but this person had to let me go. And they uh, invoked their right for the night in the clausel. And it was a sense of relief almost because, mind you, They let my wife go on the reasons that are very questionable mm -hmm. and everything got sorted out. Everything is fine. Everything is okay. But they called me and they're like, look, we understand this is putting you in a tough spot. I said, no, you know, this is my career. Spoke about it with her. Um, this is business between you and her. Does Tom, her husband have a opinion on it? Sure he does. Does Alistair Black, the professional, do? Nope. He's ready to go to work. All I want to do is work. All I want to do is create. All I want to do is present. You have to be a professional. Even in the darkest of times, you still have to be a professional. It's just, it's just what it is. Because at the end of the day, if I don't, then, then, then what have I gained? All this work for nothing. All this like resilience for nothing. And you know, she agreed. So, you know, and then um, set home for seven months. Did my absolute best. I don't think there was a week where I wasn't trying to get in get in touch with either Bruce or, or anyone from 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 uh, creative or like had conversations with them, uh, making sure that I was on top of things. Um, the vignettes were supposed to air after Mania. They didn't, and I was like, okay, um, you know, show after Mania. It's 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 a busy book show. I get it, sure. right? Two weeks of vignettes and then another week of no vignette. And then I started to go, what is going on? Why are we not, you know, because at that point, you're also not really presenting the audience with the idea that you have a lot of trust in this because you're already kind of like breaking it up. Yep. Again, I was, I was, I was assured that nothing was wrong. Nothing was going on. And um, two weeks of vignettes, last vignette, I, uh, I, 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 I kicked Biggie. And then a week later, obviously, I was on TV. Um, they, 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 they were kind of like, no, we're letting it breathe a little bit because we feel we got a lot of out of the, um, out of the kick with E and then four days later, um, there we go. And again, I know why not something I'm going to discuss here. Cause that's also something I want to talk about, talk about in a, in, in a different light, but sure. you know, it's, it's, um, and I know the way I'm sounding and I know the way that this all sounds is it's, it sounds super like you know, what the fuck and negative. But again, I'm not focusing on the negative part. Mm -hmm. I had, a, I had like, all it did for me was present to me how resilient I am as a person, how creative I can be with, with shackles on mm -hmm. and um, how I can like create within the boundaries that I'm given and um, that my mind can go 
you know, in a lot of good places um, when I'm being held down, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I didn't get to do what I was promised to do. And a lot of the things that were promised to me were not fulfilled, but I had a good experience. I had a good four or five years. I had a good, I have a good life. I met my wife there. Yeah, I, I, amen. I, met people, I met people like you there. I, I, I yeah. made so many good connections, um, you know, and um, I just can't, I just can't be mad. Maybe yeah. maybe it's still coming. I don't know, but I've I, like I said when when I got re re released with all the stuff that was stacked up against me, and all the, the, the you know the, the the hoops that made me, that make me jump through, and like you know the the questionable bipolar style booking and stuff like that, and up and down, up and down. I'm still here.